everybody end of 2017 so of course something has to go bad and break uh, in this case it's a rather actually so far until recently been a nice but expensive all clad um, slow cooker and uh, this is the one with the aluminum pot I recommend that one versus the other but that's a different story uh, I have a cheaper crock pot of course but this is you know the it's plugged in and it all comes on but the problem is is that it doesn't heat or if it does it's very uneven so there's uh, there's this thing in here which is what actually seems to heat it uh, and there's a I don't know if it's a switch or something but you push this in here and uh, um, it's supposed to I think note there's like probably an indicator that hey okay there's something in there in this case the pot and it's supposed to start warming up uh, but it doesn't do that very well anymore that's not very old probably had it like three years but these things are supposed to last and this one clearly has got a problem so I'm gonna crack it open and see what I can find um, I th think it's pretty clear that all Clyde does not want you to take this apart I've noticed that I already messed up and I'll have to fix this somehow or get a new one uh, this foot did not come out and I was just curious to see if they did uh, and what happened was is it just ripped and there's another piece inside but that's my fault um, and uh, I know there's not much about fixing these online I mean there's stuff that talks about them but um, most people they just don't have anything about them I think because they're commodity products and people just go buy another after all the cheap ones are cheap they're 30 bucks uh, but they're also smaller and, and they break a lot easier. I like this one a lot. It's It cooks well when it works. Um, but there's two nuts there. And then I'm going to go from there to see what I can find out in terms of it being messed up. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Uh, one other point. Don't do this unless you really want to do it. And even then, you're risking destroying or whatever. You void your warranty, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Mine doesn't work, so I'm just doing this. And uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, yeah, this is a disassembly that is not for the faint of heart. And in fact, I would recommend you not do this, but you might want to, whatever. Um, yeah, okay, so you got this bowl thingy. Um, it has uh, a sensor around. There's springs that hold it in place, all sorts of fun things. Um, and let's see if I can show you. Uh, this is the control piece. Uh, well, I take that back. This seems to be the circuitry that manages both the power, um, and it's uh, kind of a pain to get into. I might be able to disconnect this so I can actually test it. Um, and the power cables here if you can see it and then the display and buttons are here I'm going to assume these are good because everything works it tries so I don't think there's any problem there if there's going to be any issue it's going to be in the heating element or the sensor thingy which I don't really know is actually a sensor come to think of it I know that in theory it's not supposed to work if uh, you know it's not sensing something so um, yeah I don't know we'll see and then uh, if there's gonna be anything that I would imagine is bad it's gonna be something in here or in here I also I'll check for like shorts or anything like that um, yeah like I said this is gonna be a fascinating to try to get this back together too uh, I've got two screws to put in here uh, I've got this thing to put together um, yeah this thing has to go on the bottom. The bolts are fascinating. Uh, they use what appears to be, well, if you ever see the, uh, the bolts that are um, knockdown fasteners, uh, they're similar to this, but these are hollow. And uh, they fit uh, here. And there's two nuts on the inside that help hold this uh, piece here in place. Um, I also haven't figured out how to get this off. I think this might actually be one piece. There's something that might pop out here, but I don't know. I'm worried about going any further with it. Um, 
if I go any further, I'm concerned I'll break something because I just don't know enough about how this is assembled. I'll probably poke around some more and figure it out, I think, but I still might not do it because I don't need to get into it. That would be nice. Anyway, I'll be back once I've done some more poking around and testing. Everybody I'm back. Um, so I think, hard to see. Uh, you know, let me get something to point with. Um, and also, let me see if I can get this in focus. So I pulled, uh, I guess you call it the actual real work board. Um, hang on, let me try to zoom in and focus. You can see, uh, hard to maneuver with this thing the way it is. There, okay, focus. Okay, um, they, it's very difficult to see here, and there's uh, this is uh, the board that has the beeper when it's done or when you hit buttons and stuff. But pulling it out of the way, uh, if I can hold it out of the way, um, you can see, I hope you can see. Hang on, sorry, this thing's in the way. Uh, you notice here, there's a whole bunch of black stuff. I don't know if this is a, a carbon film resistor, I think it is. I don't know. Probably I'm wrong on that. I think it's a capacitor. I think it's popped. Though it's got, it doesn't have a capacitance on it. I gotta go look a little more in this board and try to figure it out, but it's clear and there's black coming out here at the bottom that it's leaked out all over. I don't think that, that does not look like any, uh, using some people's phrase, celastic or conformal coating or anything like that. That seems to be that this thing popped and leaked out. Um, I'm going to dig some more, probably test it out, try to figure out what this actually is. I think it's a cap, but I don't know. I'm not an expert, so uh, I have to go out and dig like normal people do. Anyway, I'll be back. All right, uh, this is definitely what went bad. Uh, you can see there is a nice big black mark. Can't really tell, but it's bubbles too, so it... Uh, I'm guessing it's a capacitor. Uh, usually that's what happens to them. Anyway, um, I gotta figure this out. It's only got, it's a 250 volt AC, 225K, it's all it says. Um, so I'll have to go and do some digging on that. But uh, anyway, yeah, off to look around on Google. Thanks, I'll be back. Hey everybody, I'm back. Um, it's, it's actually been some time since I've worked on this. Uh, partly because I had to order um, the uh, replacement capacitor uh, to replace this other bad one that was on top of the power board. So um, here's the bad, bad cap on uh, the power board, if you remember. And uh, yeah, so um, it turns out I figured out um, a number of things. Uh, the heating element is indeed this kind of odd that it has the spring but I'm guessing they want to make sure it has contact I, I don't know what this is other than maybe it's a temperature sensor um, for the uh, inside of the cooker uh, anyway um, I'm, I'm thinking that's how that works so I did some digging and I found yes it is indeed a capacitor uh, it's a metal film capacitor uh, the 225k on the um, on the capacitor represents a code. Um, represents a code. So you have two, two, five, K. These two represent the value, the first two numbers. The third number, it's a similar to how they do it with the resistors with the color codes. This is the multiplier. And in this case, this represents the tolerance. Uh, you can look it up online and find it. The tolerance in this case K is 10%. Uh, that is 2.2. You multiply it by 5. Well, in this case, it's 5 represents 100,000 picofarads. So to find this, it would be ends up being 2.2 million picofarads, which is 2.2 microfarads. And that is the value of the, the capacitor. Um, so I hunted for a while and I'd found um, some that were just, uh, I tried to 
go to a reputable dealer. Well, what I say reputable, but just one located in the States here that I know sells pretty good stuff. Uh, either I went, I tried DigiKey, I tried Mauser. They just don't have uh, this value in, in this size. And I'm, I'm kind of skeptical about the size, but okay. You, you take what you can find. So I ended up going on eBay and I found there are plenty of them for sale. They all coming out of China. So I can understand why you can't find these anymore locally. I say locally in the States. Uh, I think just because they stopped manufacturing them. Anyway, so I found a bunch of them. I mean, it was like $10. It's not like it's a lot of money. Uh, they're perfect replacements. Uh, I'm going to solder it in here in a bit. Um, I wanted to just give it an update, and when I do, I'll I'll come back. Um, and then, of course, I also have to figure out how to get all the pieces back together. Uh, I know, like, I got the power. This goes inside the case and, and goes screws back in here, and then this, of course, goes around the inside of the cooker, um, etc. There's a bunch of things i got to put that together. This isn't an easy thing, and I'm hoping there's nothing else wrong with the power board. Uh, I don't... There was nothing that seemed to be wrong, but... Um, I mean, it could have been that it just that it overheated. I don't know. Or maybe it was faulty and failed her. Uh, maybe it's designed planned obsolescence. I mean, that's complete speculation on my part, in my opinion. But I would not be surprised since that seems to be um, a mode of operation nowadays for many companies that it's planned obsolescence. We want you to buy a new one. In this case, it'd be one thing if you're buying a $30 cheapo from a, a, a lower end store versus an expensive name brand like Allclad. So it also might be that their supplier just, they in themselves weren't building it, they were farming it out and whoever built it cut corners, which is also often the case. Anyway, um, when I'm done, uh, soldered it back together, I'm gonna uh, put everything back together and then we'll test it out and see what happens. I'll be back. Uh, one other thing, just to show you the difference, um, I'm got my LCR meter, I'm gonna show you what yeah, this is the good. This is the bad one, which is quite poor. It's not even. Yeah, it's pretty bad off. That is one point fifteen hundred approximately nanofarads, which is not even close. And then uh, one of the new ones is two point two one microfarads with a dissipation factor of point zero zero five. Um, little above but it's quite fine. That's well within tolerance of 10%. So uh, this capacitor is gonna go in. I'll be back. Hey all, I'm back. Um, so that was quite some effort to get this thing back together. I don't recommend this unless you're really, really, really prepared to do a lot of struggling work. I'm certain that the people who put it together probably can do a much quicker and much better job than I can, but that's the way it goes. Um, so I plugged it up and I've Turned it on and tested it real quick, and it does indeed work. Um, I can tell quite quickly that it is working because it's producing a significant amount of heat. Um, and uh, so I am quite sure that's what went wrong. Now, I don't know, maybe there's something else that's an ultimate cause, or maybe it's just that capacitor is bad, or maybe the capacitor just gets hot over time. Again, maybe it's just a uh, I don't know, they cut a corner, the specs are different. I have no idea. Um, you know, it is made in China, so your mileage may vary. Um, but if the capacitor goes out again, I got four more, and I can always do the same fix again. Anyway, thanks for watching.